Today we'll be talking about Michael Porter Jr. So before we start today's video, I want to hear your comments down below on what you think about Michael Porter Jr. And let's get into today's video. Let's talk about Michael Porter Jr. The Denver Nuggets are streaking. Even more impressively, they are streaking on the road. The Nuggets have now won five straight games in six of their last seven, including capturing all four games so far on their five-game road trip. Denver, of course, has an MVP frontrunner and all-world contributor in Nicole Jokic. Their backcourt is in a good position under Jamal Murray, a developing young scorer who's averaged at least 16.7 points per game in each of his professional seasons since becoming a full-time starter. I'm not one of the people that is idolizing over Michael Porter Jr. to be recognized as a star in progress as soon as possible. Porter, however, is one who made headlines on Monday after defeating the Dallas Mavericks. Despite coming off the bench, he scored 30 points in just 27 minutes of action, while he has seen only seven games so far this season. That marks the second time he had reached the 30-point mark in the 2021 season. Even though these have been limited minutes, however, it's clear that Porter is something special, and this season, he's truly been able to put his talents on display. The 6'10", 220-pound Porter has seen a significant bump in minutes, and with that extra time on the floor, has averaged 18.3 points, 17 point, not 17, 7.1 rebounds, shot 55.6% from the field, and 47 0.1% from three. His 69.4% true shooting percentage is also fifth in the NBA for non-centers with at least 75 shots on the season. One encouraging takeaway is that his turnover percentage is down from his rookie season, which was 11.5% to now 7.2%. But the main reason why he's so successful is that Porter has a dynamic toolkit of ways he can beat the defender. Approximately half of his field goal attempts are three-pointers. 30% have come at the rim. 21% of those shots are from mid-range. That makes him a triple threat as a scorer, which is one of the most coveted traits for an emerging star. The 22-year-old forward is shooting 47.7% on three-pointers from mid-range according to Cleaning the Glass. His jumper looks effortless and is also sustainable as he continues his career. One of the more noticeable differences is that he's hitting his shots from the corners more often. Last season, Mike shot 43.6% from corner threes on about half an attempt per 36. But this season, he's increased that to 1.33 pointers from the quarter per 36 while shooting 58.3% on those attempts, which is awesome. Considering how closely defenders have to guard Jokic and Murray, there will be a lot more opportunities for Porter if he waits in the corner. Jokic does not have to worry about whether or not Porter will sink these jumpers. Jumpers, I almost sound like New York there. Jumpers. Yes, Porter, a strong shooter and elite finisher, is an offensive weapon, but his impact on the game goes far beyond that end of the court. Porter is also an excellent rebounder. His 13.3% rebound percentage is fourth best on the Nuggets roster. And on defense, he can leverage his size to make an impact almost anywhere on the floor. In fact, Porter is first on the team in blocks per game with about one and second in steals with one and a half. He's not without his flaws, of course. While certainly has the frame and tools to be one of the best defenders in the entire NBA, Porter is often caught sleeping on the defensive end. While there are flashes from time to time, he needs to improve in this area, especially on the ball, to reach his full potential. Likewise, Porter has struggled as a distributor so far in his short career. In 63 career games, he's just had 56 assists, which is only good for an average of 0.9 per game. If I could do anything to improve on him, it would be to improve as a passer, because that would allow Porter to further exploit opponents on the offensive end and would be a major boom to the Nuggets offense. Still, Porter can do more. He looked arguably like the team's second best player this season, but for whatever reason, the Nuggets coaching staff has moved Porter to the bench in recent games. I'll get into why I believe they've done it, but let's continue with the script. Whether they think Porter is a role player, which at this point, it's obvious he's anything but, or are simply trying to protect him from further injury, Denver must reverse course. If they truly want to compete in the West for an NBA title, the Nuggets must feature Porter more, not less. I like the way he can carry the bench. While Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic get a rest in the first half, I like sticking with him over Paul Millsap or Barton to close out games. The biggest key for me when it comes to Mike is giving him the damn ball. I still get baffled during the first bench shift when somehow Michael Porter Jr. doesn't seem to have the ball for three possessions in a row. Monty Morris and Jamichael Green are outstanding bench players. Facundo Campazzo is liable to pull some wizardry at any moment, but Mike is the motor behind the unit and often behind a lot of units that include stars as well. Feed him, let him eat, and win basketball games. Simple as that. What I'm trying to say with time, Porter can continue honing his craft and eventually become an even greater weapon for the Nuggets that he already is. That said, Denver has 
provided him with enough on-court opportunities for that to happen. They need to. They they have to if he wants to get that good. And just might require a move back into the starting lineup. Yes, I love him on the bench. In the long run, it's going to have to have him in the bench. Porter might just be the guy that could push Denver onto the Western Conference hump and into the NBA Finals to maybe get a title. But in order for him to do that, they have to understand who he is as a player and how he'd be at his best to make an impact on the team. Can he make an impact from the bench? Sure. But could that hurt Denver or even stunt Porter's growth in the long run? Yeah. Could he keep Porter from being the best version of himself and by extension keep Denver from being the best version of themselves? Again, definitely. And Michael Porter Jr. The Nuggets have a generational talent, but it's about time they start treating him like one. Thank you again and again and again. I just want to say thank you again and again and again for the continuous support on my channel. And guys, that was the video today. We'll be, we talked about Michael Porter Jr. I want to hear right now down below, what video should I make next? Damn, that wasn't even English. But Michael Porter Jr. is going to help lead this Denver Nuggets team to their second Western Conference final against the Los Angeles Lakers again. If I want to make some outlandish outlandish uh, assumptions that's going to be one of them again guys we're at 2500 subscribers 2500 subscribers we're almost to 10,000 a court by the end of the first month we are a quarter the way there to 10,000 which is halfway to what i want i want to get 20,000 by the end of 2021 i really do believe it i feel like once we hit 10,000 it's just going to be money 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 people are just going to keep coming we're going to get all those yummy mummies but um yeah so um that was the video for today i hope you guys did really enjoy it michael ford jr star stud i'll better put some stock into that man <laughs> yeah nah uh, that i want to talk about the fact that i feel like there should be more stuff that we should be wanting to talk about and i have a lot of stuff it's just Sometimes the videos, the, right now, the best videos have been individual players. So I have been focusing on individual players because you guys have been seeming to enjoy that more. I also won something against Broadband TV. Hopefully they don't do anything to this video. But I won. I hit up all the directors. They tried demonetizing Andrew Wiggins as a defensive beast. And I won. I won the sheets. I Shawshank Redemption did. I literally wrote them an email for like two days. Like everyone, CEO, CFO, directors, everyone was getting an email from me saying, hey, you copy claimed my video. It was fair use. Please take that claim off. Kept telling them, kept telling them, kept telling them. Check the day. And guess what? In my video, mm -hmm, that copyright claims. That's the video, guys. Hope you guys do have a good one because I know I will. Sometimes, guys, peace. Ooh.